This morning, I was having a really weird dream. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? What is this? 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 It was sort of a low-budget dream, so I had to provide all my own echoes. And it immediately followed a dream where I was naked going to school, so I hadn't changed wardrobe yet. But what happened in the dream was that I realized that my entire home had something bad happen to it. I don't remember a lot of the specifics, but my homestead was destroyed and destroyed completely. But problem solver that I am, I realize this is something that I can handle. I know lots of people in the prepping and preparedness community here on YouTube, and I bet there's someone that would be willing to take me in and we can kind of pool resources. But who to choose? Who would you choose? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. If you were in a situation where you needed to relocate and your options were the prepping and preparedness hosts here on YouTube, which prepping host here on YouTube would you choose? I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Not waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. Hey, this is Praxis. I've been hosting this prepping and preparedness channel for a while now, and I feel like I've built up a bit of a reputation where if I were to approach someone, they'd say, hey, this is a guy that knows how to build houses. Yeah. Okay, so it's rotating and sliding onto the pedestals, looking good. And also how to blow out his eardrums when he shoots 5.56 five, for the first time without hearing protection. <laughs> But I think most people would see me as more glass half full than glass empty, and I think I'd have a pretty good shot. So in this video, I want to brainstorm with you. Who do you think would be a good choice for someone, uh, for me to approach if I wanted to partner up with someone? Who would you want to partner up with? There are so many different options out there. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about any specific channels, but you know the channels that you tend to watch. I know the channels that I tend to watch. And there are so many people that have so many different personalities, so many different styles, and living in so many different uh, situations and environments that there's a lot to choose from. And it's a pretty big question. Like, who would you choose in an emergency? It's a pretty big uh, response responsibility in making the right call there. So let's, for the uh, purpose of this video, presume that whoever you approach is going to accept you in. Hi, I'd like to join your group. Sounds fine to me. How would you make a decision like that? Well, the first way I think that you would want to make that decision is to figure out the area that you want to move into because you have preppers and people that are into this stuff all over the United States, all over the world, and they are all living in different sorts of situations. And some situations come with different problems and other situations uh, come with other sorts of uh, attributes and resources. And it's really important to kind of consider all of those. One resource that I think would be really uh, helpful if you want to brainstorm this a little bit further or if you're thinking about a place that you might want to relocate, you know, other preppers aside, just a place for you to go, is a book that I really like. It's called Strategic Relocation and it's written by Joel M. Skusen. This is a really, really excellently researched book and it goes through all the different things you'd want to think about if you were thinking about relocating to another place. It does have some uh, some text in there that I feel a little bit uncom uncomfortable uh, advertising to you. I, there, there are whole sections in this book that uh, involve the idea of how you can avoid trying to move too close to Hispanics. I, you don't want to move next to Hispanics, I guess, according to Joel Skusen. But there, if you can, you know, kind of accept that that stuff is in the book, there's a lot of stuff that's really well researched. And some of the uh, topics in there include things uh, like population density. If you're going to be moving to an area, you want to be moving to a place that uh, probably doesn't have a particularly high population density, because if you are in an emergency situation and inputs aren't going into cities, uh, people are going to have the most problems in environments like that. Also things, you know, right now we're looking at the potential of nuclear exchanges between countries, unfortunately, and you know, you wouldn't want to be moving next to a place that has a lot of military targets. You know, a, a place that has, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, nuclear facilities is probably going to be a first strike target. You probably don't want to move right down the road from that. Uh, staying on the topic of nuclear, just things like nuclear power plants. I uh, live in New England and all across the East Coast, we have way too many nuclear power plants from my feeling of comfort anyway. And it's a real liability. If you are in a situation where the grid power goes down, nuke plants are going to have to 
be shut down. They're going to have to be shut down in an orderly fashion to avoid going into meltdown themselves. Now, there are plans for this to happen, and nuclear plants are always put next to rivers uh, so that, you know, worst comes to worst, they just flood the plant with the river, and that is going to act as the cooling mechanism. So they do have plans, but plans you know, always have the possibility of failure. And especially with, you know, looking at the state of a lot of the rivers in the world, you know, will the rivers even be running or will they be dry the day that people need them to, you know, to cool those new plants? So moving next to a nuclear power plant, I think would be a questionable uh, decision. Also, you know, if you're moving to uh, different states within the United States or different countries in the world, uh, are these areas where you have the ability and the right to defend yourself? There are some areas here in the United States where it is presumed that you should just rely on the police to defend you and uh, offer all the protection to you, uh, you know, notwithstanding the fact that the police uh, can't do that. I mean, it's just, it's too big a job for, a job for them, but the society uh, in those states just presumes that the, the police are going to handle that. So they say the individual, you know, should not be empowered to defend themselves. You know, so would you be moving to a place where you would be uh, kind of shackled and prevented from protecting yourself if you were in a situation where the rule of law really fell apart? Also, weather considerations. And this is a moving target. Uh, you know, the weather of today is not the same as the weather it was, you know, several years ago. And it's almost certainly not going to be the same weather that we're seeing tomorrow. So are you moving into an area that is going to be, have frequent hurricanes? and storms and storm surges and droughts and you know all these other ty types of things wildfires uh, you want to be moving into an area that is not going to become uh, you know hell on earth if you were there in five years and the weather patterns just keep getting worse and worse and worse so there's a lot to consider when it comes to the idea of where you might want to relocate in an emergency situation where you'd be the most safe. And I'll say it again, despite the fact that I don't agree with everything that's written in this book, this is a very well-researched book. And if you are thinking about the idea of relocating to a place that is safer and more stable, I couldn't think of a better beginning point than Strategic Relocation by Joel M. Skusen. Here's a link uh, up uh, you know, in the cards, and I'll throw one in the description below if you want to get a copy of this. I don't ever see these being really sell sold used. When people buy these, they want to keep for the long haul because once you get in here you realize how valuable the information is but that is not the only consideration when it comes to moving to a new place you have the location and you have you know whatever the the home uh, setup is of whatever YouTube prepper you might be choosing but you also have the prepper themselves what is their personality like and there is a lot related to that that I think is really important first thing to consider right out of the gate is skills does this person have a lot of skills or do they just uh, advertise a lot of you know, tech that they get sent. I know there's a lot of YouTube channels where the host, uh, you know, just will advertise this flashlight and that flashlight. Wait, by the way, we got a flashlight video coming up here on this channel. Uh, you know, this power generation unit, you know, with solar panels or, you know, uh, this, that, or the other thing. A lot of prepping hosts here on YouTube, they just kind of hawk stuff. And stuff is great, stuff is really useful, and stuff can make your life more comfortable and make a lot of situations easier. But skills are really important as well because stuff can always break and skills will stay with you. Does this prepping host that you are choosing, do they have the skills to really make this stuff work when things get down and dirty and, you know, the batteries run out or the batteries break or the moving part breaks or the belt snaps or whatever? Is this a person that's a problem solver? Do they have the skills to kind of work with what they've got and make it work for them? Have they built a community around them? You can't just do the stuff on your own. And even if it's just you and your favorite YouTube prepping host, you know, that is still going to be a really difficult situation. Uh, have they built kind of a community around them with where they have other people that are going to be in there so you could be part of a community because a community is always going to be stronger than an individual or even two individuals together also integrity and morals does this person have uh, the integrity where you feel like if you showed up at the door and you know you're being courteous you're bringing like all your stuff with you you know you don't want to just show up empty empty-handed you're gonna like have your car packed and full filled with food and you know you get on their front doorstep and you're like surprise I've decided to join your group here uh, is the first thing that they're gonna do is pull a, re a revolver on you and say thanks for bringing all that food now get out of here and leave the food is this someone that you can trust do they have an integrity do they have morals uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is just their personality and I think this is something that a lot of people probably don't think that is that important, but I think it really is. There are lots of YouTube prepping hosts here on YouTube, and I will, uh, you know, I'll watch lots of channels. Uh, but there are some people that I would never want to 
spend any time with in person more than like five minutes because they would just drive me up the wall. And if I was in some kind of a living situation with them, I would feel like I was just on eggshells the entire time waiting for some kind of like a politically motivated meltdown or, you know, you know, who knows what. Some people are more pleasant to be around than others. And I think that that's a real consideration if you're deciding on someone to kind of team up with. Yes, the skills are important, all that other stuff is important, but if this person just drives you crazy, uh, you know, it's not gonna be a very functional situation there and it's probably not gonna work out really well. Now, I don't wanna name specific names here on YouTube, but I welcome you to do that. That's your job. I would love to hear down in the comments below, who are your top picks for if you were in a situation where you lost everything and you needed somewhere to go, and let's just say hypothetically, anyone would be willing to take you in, who would you want to go to? So many options out there. So many of them have pros, so many of them have cons. I'd love to hear your top pick and some of your runners up. Now I know odds, you know, right here, Praxis, I know I'm number one. Let's keep me out of this. Let's keep me out of this. And uh, I would like to hear everyone who's not Praxis Prepper here on YouTube, who would be your top pick? Who would be your runners up? Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and don't miss out on this video where I talk about the secrets behind some of the top YouTube prepping channel hosts.